Hi, welcome to my presentation on the relation between student satisfaction and student performance in blended learning. I am Nachama Sokalingam and I am a lecturer at SIM University, Singapore. I'll start the presentation with the background of why we measure student satisfaction and student performance, what this study investigates, how the results, conclusion, implications of the findings and the proposed future studies. So here we are, why do we measure student satisfaction? The practice of collecting student feedback to measure student satisfaction in universities is widespread and one of the main reasons is to ensure the quality of the program and teaching. And with the increasing number of educational institutions, it is essential to maintain the quality to attract potential students and retain current students. And quality is a complex concept. Taking the view that education is service, a measurement of quality in services literature is that the service received supersedes what is expected. And one way of determining the quality is to gather feedback from stakeholders, stakeholders such as parents, employees of the graduates and the students. Of these students are the actual end users of the service and therefore it is crucial that we gather feedback from the students. There are a number of arguments put up against student evaluation or student feedback. For instance, it is said that students may not know what is good for them. Student satisfaction does not necessarily indicate what students have actually learned and that students may be grade biased, that is, if they get a high grade, they may rate the course to be good. Several studies have addressed these repeated questions. The paper by Marsh 1987 shows that student feedback is indeed valid and reliable and other studies suggest that measures other than student feedback of student satisfaction can be used to determine the quality of education. For instance, we could use student performance. If students are satisfied and they have evaluated a course to be good, then it is reasonable to expect that they would actually do well in the course. But this needs to be tested. And several studies show that uh, there is a correlation between student satisfaction and grades. But correlation does not necessarily mean causal effect. And addressing is Addressing the issue of grade bias, uh, Pike's study shows that in fact satisfaction exerts a greater influence on grades than grades on satisfaction. However, causal effect of the various aspects of the student learning such as the instructional materials and learning process on the student's academic performance is still needed. And this is where the present study comes in. The objective of the present study is to investigate the interrelationship between student satisfaction on five aspects of blended learning and their performance. And the five aspects are course content, design, handbook, online discussion and assignment. But before we go into what was done and what the results were, I think it is essential to give you a brief introduction to the educational context. This research was carried out at SIM University, Singapore. SIM Univers University aims to deliver the real-world knowledge to working adults and professionals through flexible learning. SIM University students are adults of typical age of 30. They're working professionals who are studying in service, that is, they are part-time students and they could be enrolled in one of the 47 programs offered, five, offered by four schools. And in providing opportunities for flexible learning, SIM University is moving into e-learning and several of our courses are run in blended format at present. Each course consists of six lessons, three of which are conducted face-to-face -face and three are conducted online. And the characteristics of blended learning are that learning contents are made available online, no face-to-face -face sessions for didactic teaching, it represents collaborative learning and the online, um, the submission of assignments and return of assignments is online and therefore the support, the administrative support is also online. And all of these students are required to evaluate the courses they have completed. They do this online before enrolling for the next course. And this is where we obtain the data set from. Data for this study was obtained from a student evaluation exercise held in July 2010 involving 2,719 students from 12 business courses taught in blended format. First, validity and reliability of the 15 items were tested and then path analysis was carried out to 
test a causal model of the five factors in student grades. The causal model consisted of the following input elements, process elements, and output elements. Input elements refer to input materials that initiate learning, and these are the course content design and guide, or the handbook. The process elements refer to what happens during the learning cycle, and this is represented by the online discussion and assessment. And the output element refers to the outcome of the learning, and this is the student grade. The hypothesized model was that the in input elements influence the process elements, which in turn determine the output elements. Here is a sample of the instrument used for data analysis of this feedback of this study. Students provided the feedback online. The five hypothesized factors were measured by three questions each. The results are presented next. The demographics of the population of uh, students are as follows. Male to female ratio was about 50 to 50. Average age of the student population was 29. The results of the correlation analysis are shown here. All the correlation coefficients between the five factors were significant. The strongest correlation was found between design and guide. The weakest correlation was found between content and discussion. And overall, the values were high and suggested high correlation between the factors. Reliability of the five factors was determined by computing Kronbeck alpha. This was of an average of 0.96, indicating a strong reliable measure. And here are the uh, descriptive statistics. Students were most satisfied with the assessment. Next, we'll, next is the uh, result from the confirmatory factor analysis. The goodness of fit indices of the model is shown here. Three indices were used as references to measure the goodness of fit, chi-square by df, cfi value, and rmca value. Chi-square by DF ratio should be less than 3 um, to indicate a good fit of the model with the data, but this value is sensitive to sample size. So if you have a large sample size, the value might um, be higher because of that reason. The CFI value ranges from 0 to 1, and a value of more than 0.95 is considered to be a good model fit. RMCA value is not sensitive to sample size, and the lower the RMCA value, the better the fit. A commonly reported cutoff point is 0 0.06. And from the results, you will see that the five-factor model fits reasonably well with the data. The CFI value is 0.99. RMCA value is 0.05. The chi-square by DF ratio could be explained by the large sample size. And when we tried the same model with a smaller sample size, the value does come down. And all factor loadings range from 0.87 to 0.96, indicating that the measures were uh, significant in measuring the underlying latent factor. Next slide, we see the path model analysis uh, displaying the relationship between content design guide, discussion, assessment, and grades. The fit indices again show a reasonable fit. The results also show that the three input elements, content, design, and guide, um, they only had an indirect effect on the grades. Direct path coefficients between content grade, design grade, guide grade, and discussion grade were very weak and did not reach statistical significance. Overall, this is what we can conclude from the results. Input elements, content design, and guide influence the process elements, and the process elements influence the outcome. Of the three input elements, content, design, and guide, guides seem to have the strongest influence on online discussion. And these three input elements actually explain 64% variance in online discussion, indicating that they are important factors for online discussion. Content, design, and online discussion influence assessment and explain 71% of the variance in assessment. Assessment seemed to influence grade, but this relationship was found to be weak and it only explained 1.3% of the variance. Now, what are the implications of the findings? What, why is it that even though students seem to be satisfied, this is not highly related with the grade? The reason could be that uh, there are actually other factors that are more important for the academic achievement of students, that is the grades, and one of it is the instructors. 
Um, the, another factor could be availability of study time. The second reason could be that the students in the context of the study are adult learners and they are likely to be mastery oriented and performance oriented. That is, they learn for the love of learning and the passion of learning and that they are not so concerned with the grades. So they may be satisfied and contented with the learning and this may not necessarily be reflected in their grades. The implications of the course developers and instructors are that for course developers, they should ensure that the content design and guide is clear and that it provides sufficient support for online discussion. Very often, we do not focus on the activities and this study highlights the importance of uh, the kind of activities, the kind of uh, content that we come up with to ensure that the online discussion is also taken into consideration in course design. As for the instructors, they should take note that students do appreciate assessment, in particular assessments that show them how to improve. And assessment should not just be considered for evaluative purposes, they should be for formative purposes and it should show them, show the students how to improve. The results presents itself for further studies. For instance, we can study the goal orientation of students and that will help us to understand the relationship between satisfaction and grades. We can also include the role of instructors and how much they contribute to satisfaction and learning. And another point to explore will be how the learning environment such as the library services and so on contribute to satisfaction and learning. These are the references I have used in this PowerPoint slides. The generic image pictures were taken from Google Images. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. I'll appreciate your questions and feedback to learn more from you. Thank you for listening. Thank you.